The country is facing very clear and difficult economic problems that in and of themselves are sufficient to occupy our full attention and energy. That we should now be distracted to have to deal with a number of issues that affect the access to health care by Barbadians and the quality of our governments is disturbing. I refer specifically to the decision by the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Board in respect of the dismissal of the consultant position and an attempt to dismiss another one, and the termination of the Chairman of the National Housing Corporation by Minister McCaffrey. There is a deafening silence from both of the ministers responsible for these ministries, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Housing. The news on Friday yesterday of the dismissal of one consultant physician and the attempt to dismiss another from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is but another episode in the sad saga of the harassment and persecution of healthcare workers at all levels at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. A few months ago, it was the temporary workers, and the National Union of Public Workers is still battling on their behalf. Now, it is the consultant physicians, and the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners has yesterday announced industrial action, and that it will only handle emergency cases until this matter is properly disposed of. Barbados need the assurance that they can access quality health care. They do not want to be at the center of industrial disputes or quarrels when they are sick. They simply want to be treated. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital Board must be made aware that whatever actions it wants to take, it cannot do so in a manner that jeopardizes patient care. Reports that a consultant physician was effectively denied access for two days to his patients, some of whom were operated on that week, are shocking and unconscionable. To refuse to renew contracts of doctors who have been employed for more than two decades without giving them reasons or warning letters on their files will inevitably lead to controversy. To seek to dismiss your only urologist when he has filed legal proceedings of which you are aware and when he is on call the only urologist on call in the month of August and rostered until the end of September is to ignore the needs of your patients and indeed to be contemptuous of the court. To do so and to do all of this while in the middle of industrial negotiations with the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners on this very issue is deplorable. These decisions defy common sense and the basic tenets of sound administrative and industrial practice. However, of equal concern, they place at risk the care of your patients whose only interest is to get better. I am appalled that in the middle of all of this, a medical crisis, that the Minister of Health left the country yesterday to go on vacation, a Mediterranean cruise. Indeed, I am calling on the acting Prime Minister to resolve the situation urgently and to call on the minister to return to Barbados as a matter of urgency and to defer his vacation. He is entitled to a vacation, but take it at a time when persons are not in the middle of a medical crisis. Equally, Barbadians know that a patient can be in pain and in serious need of treatment without their case being categorized as an emergency. So that those persons who will be suffering from pain or who need to have medical attention will now be deprived of that until this issue can be resolved. They will not understand that they must be the victims of an industrial impasse triggered by the precipitous and reckless decisions of the board. What has happened with the um, efforts to reach uh, the acting prime minister? Any response to that whatsoever? I mean, you, you, you all stated that you made efforts to reach the, the acting prime minister. No, we didn't say that we will make okay. efforts to reach him. We are calling on him to act. Barbadians understand and appreciate that the substitute prime minister is overseas recuperating. He's not well. But he gave full authority to the acting prime minister to take whatever decisions are necessary in the running of the government's affairs. 
And we are saying that you had crisis after crisis now moving. We now have also the possible threat of action by the Sanitation Service Authority in relation to the engagement of 12 workers, such that the remaining temporary workers will receive less and less time working. These are issues that are just unfolding and nobody seems to be in charge. So you've seen um, Congress, so that, that the Willow Thompson and the rest of the um, has a step up to play. I'm saying that they're not stepping up in the play at all. I'm not going to comment on Prime Minister Thompson's conduct at this stage because it, when he announced to the country that he was not well, I said that he must be given the time and space to recuperate. I do not believe it is therefore appropriate for me to speak about the conduct of his leadership at this stage. In terms of the, the, the consultants and not the, the hospital, I get the impression from, from Guy Yoke yesterday that the terms of, of, um, of engagement seem not to have changed. I mean, he, he, what he's saying is that the clause, the, what, the, what the consultants use, is the same thing too that, that, that they have used as well to, to end, their, end their own contract. Let me bring this issue into sharp focus. Of course, the hospital can refuse to renew a contract with anybody. But when you have engaged somebody for 20 years or more, the law says that there's a legitimate expectation that their contract will be renewed unless they are being dismissed for a cause or unless you've brought to their attention conduct and behavior. They have not brought that to the attention of the consultants. Secondly, they are in the middle of discussions with the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners. The board engaged the former chairman, Mitch Codrington, to lead those discussions for the board. If I'm in the middle of discussions with you, I cannot then now seek to take action that is the subject of the industrial discussions that we are having. And therefore, it is not only what you want to do, but the manner in which it is done that very often creates the problem and the angst. And clearly the medical professionals, as with the temporary workers earlier, feel that they are being harassed and persecuted. And no one denies that the hospital has the right to take decisions. But how you do it and the manner in which you treat your staff is a relevant consideration if you expect them to perform at optimum levels in treating patients. Of course, to be the school of doctor, the consultants to <coughs> a law on their own cells as well. And those issues, if the hospital feels strongly about them, you engage in constructive discussion on them. But you don't, in the middle of discussions with an industrial um, practitioner, the former chairman, seek to take action that then makes those discussions useless. Um, the issue with ban on QEH has occurred time and again over the years. Uh, if if Barbados was under your leadership, what would you do differently to, to prevent or mitigate such circumstances from, from occurring? I believe strongly that there is a recognition that governments really are not the ideal entities to be running healthcare institutions, and that we have to have a uh, a coalition of healthcare professionals as well as representation from the patient's perspective be at the center of the, med of, of the management of medical institutions in this country. The truth is that the bureaucracy of governments have been trying to lay some of it when we created the board, but unfortunately this government seems to be running the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Board as if it is still a department of the ministry. And that is where the problems come. In one instance, and let me draw it to your attention, I understand that, for example, in respect of one of the consulting positions, his contract came to an end in November last year. The head of surgery and the director of medical services both recommended renewal of the contract. The hospital itself contacted him in March or April of this year uh, practice insurance and his CV so that there could be a speedy resolution to these matters. And then all of a sudden, two months later, a decision is taken to advertise the post. Now, something obviously went amiss and somebody obviously intervened 
to stop a process that was following the regular protocols to then reach this point. And that is why I'm saying that it is my opinion that the Ministry of Health is still treating to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Board as if it is a government department and not a separate legal entity. And more may have to be done to place distance, therefore, between the management of government-owned hospitals as well um, between the management of government-owned hospitals and the Ministry of Health. Indeed, we may well be coming to the point where the government should simply accept what is the per capita cost of the treatment of patients in the hospital, place a cap on it, and provide that money without seeking to get into the final details of the management of the hospital on a day-to-day -day basis and leave it to the healthcare professionals to do. Do you think it's possible that BAP to take the sense of I think that BAP has legitimate concerns. I think they've expressed um, themselves strongly. I think that they have chosen to take a path that at least protects those cases which they believe to be like death cases. But I believe that the whole episode is unfortunate. And if I were there, I would have to be meeting with them all last night, all this morning, all today, all tonight, such that the circumstances of regularity can obtain to the hospital, back at the hospital by tomorrow. This is not a matter that can wait until Monday for discussions. This is not a matter that can um, have to, can wait for for a minister to go off on vacation and return. This is a matter that should have been the subject of bringing all of the parties together to get back a situation of normalcy as a matter of urgency from yesterday lunchtime, when it was clear that an industrial impasse was at hand. Okay.